luminous stem beyond the globe. Don't let anyone drop you off your imagination, your creativity, or your curiosity. It's your place in the world. It's your life. Go on and do all you can with it and make it the life you want to live. Led by Mercy Jamison, NASA astronaut and the first African-American woman in space. Hello folks, welcome to the Luminous Echo podcast series by IEEE Women in Injury, Affinity of Sri Lanka Technological Campus. This podcast series is to encourage and inspire female undergraduates from all over the country and will be conducted under these five categories, which are women in engineering, women in IT, women in technology, women in science, women in entrepreneurship. So today we are having a special guest with us to discuss about women in science category. Meet the dynamic personality, Ms. Malmi Pasandi, NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory Solar System Ambassador here with us today and you're listening to luminous echo podcast series where we discuss about women in stem hello miss malmi it is our honor to have you with us today in this podcast our listeners would probably prefer hearing a small introduction about yourself from you rather than from me so ma'am please tell us a bit about yourself who you are your educational background and your family background Yes, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It is my honor to attend with uh, students who have the common dream like myself to be a woman in science, to, to achieve the STEM career as their professional, uh, in their professional lives. So I appreciate, I, uh, I thank from bottom, bottom from my heart for inviting me for this uh, program. So my name is, uh, well, you guys probably know, my uh, Malmi Kirimandalaj, and I was born and raised in Sri Lanka. Uh, when I was, since I was a kid, I always loved stars. It's something that came across to me when I was probably, I guess, three or four years old. <laughs> Small story uh, is, my father actually he had me uh, go outside every night and see the stars and he would say that the stars over there is actually the gods in the sky and they are watching over you so for so for me i'm like okay hi god i'm going to make you happy by dancing so i would dance in front of the stars and he would feed me the dinner while i was dancing so that's my first connection with the star outside the night sky. And I would go every night, just watch the beauty in it. Growing up, I um, my house was like renovating and we had a this location on my on the second floor that was like a big space where I can lie down and watch stars. And one day I actually saw a comet on my first time in my entire life, I saw a comet and i thought it was a shooting star so i made a wish for myself that i would love to reach and touch this star one day well not knowing it's a unliving thing i actually thought it was like angels you know you make these stories in your head when you're a kid so that's my first step of getting having this connection with the sky the universe Growing up, I went to Bihar uh, Mahadevi Girls School in Kiribati Gora. And I was in an English medium class from grade six to 11. And I was very much involved with my astronomy club in high school. In fact, I, I, was, uh, I became a astronomy club president when I was in 11th grade. And I just never got any other interests except that the deep connection I had with the sky this like something very unique that not it's very unexplainable you know uh, 
I would talk to it and every night I would I would not go to sleep without actually see a star outside. If it's rainy day, I would just be very gloomy about it. I remember having this deep connection with it. And I guess that connection allowed me to create my own path of having this dream to be with the stars all the time. So I wanted to go away uh, from uh, somewhere like, you know, Sri Lanka doesn't have the education I need. So I knew that I might end up going somewhere else. So for my own, I guess, uh, uh, manifestation, I was, I got this opportunity to come to United States. That's because my father was able to come here first and uh, work, uh, work and arrange me for, you know, he actually arranged my path. So I followed him here and then I went to high school and then I went to college and I'm like already on my track to get my, uh, like on the first step of my dream. So my biggest uh, regret on coming here was actually having to leave my family, like my mother and my two younger brothers. Um, it was a very hard choice, but I had a I had a two choice on my hand. It's either to leave them and achieve my dreams, or give up on my dream and live with them till they we all join together. But my mother, who was coming from like uneducational background, was smart enough to realize that if he, if she step up and cut my wings off, I would never be able to fly. So she actually gave her wings to me and allowed me to fly away far from her her house. So it was it was that moment that realized that a mother's love is actually beyond this universe. And I just realized I need to carry on her belief on, on me because she wasn't able to get the education t- she deserved growing up due to the war and due to the, uh, the uh, economic and everything. She was able to show, give me that chance. So I had no other choice, but the one choice was to follow that dream, to follow that belief that she had on me. So my parents are my biggest backbone in my journey. They were both my strength and my weakness. I always tell that. But uh, their first step was to realize that I am meant to do something that they never meant meant to do, that they were never able to do before. So that belief was really huge um, impact on my life. So I stepped on their belief and I came here just with a dream and a luggage. And um, it's been exactly 10 years since I left Sri Lanka to achieve my dream for this (laughs) March 20th. So it's very uh, funny that how this program came across onto me the same day as I left. So. But 10 years ago, I was 16 years old when I gave up my family and chose my dream. But life is all about sacrifices and you have to make that choice. You have to see the vision uh, that you want to see in your future. So I chose to come here and it sounds, it might be, feels like selfish for some people because, you know, it's your family and all. But then if I were to stay in Sri Lanka, I probably like don't know what I'm doing uh, there right now because it's just lacking the opportunity that I've been seeking. So uh, growing up, I I came to United States, went to high school and then met a lot of people from several cultural backgrounds, learned a lot of things about the world itself and um, realize uh, what are the failures, what are the mistakes, uh, how I can learn from it. So it's been a, a roller coaster. It's been a journey, but it's definitely a journey that I can probably can talk about. Not because it's um, it's just a dream, a dream that I followed, but I think it's 
anybody in my place would have done the same thing I've done. So, in fact, uh, my dream is right now is to have a professional career in a STEM background and specifically in astronomy. And I'm not there yet, but I'm still on the way. But for me to be able to guide somebody also on the same journey as mine is actually, I think it's a privilege and an honor in my life. So I, uh, now it's, I just graduated from, uh, I, I obtained two degrees so far. I have a degree in Earth and Science and I was specified in Astronomy. Right now I am in, uh, in the process of uh, applying for PhD which uh, I will tell more in uh, towards the uh, end of our conversation, but uh, that's my life so far. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. That was indeed a wonderful introduction. I guess everyone has had or will have that stage in life, which is said to be the turning point in life. So ma'am, what was your turning point in life? Yes, uh, that's a really good question. The turning point of my life is actually a story that I even shared at uh, in a newspaper. <laughs> I will tell you, I'll tell you as well. But the turning point of my life is realizing that Sri Lanka does not have the opportunity that I seek for. That nobody was there to give me what I wanted. If Sri Lanka does have an education in astronomy, a degree in astronomy, a career for a woman in astronomy, I would not have leave my country. I would not have leave my mother and my brothers, but they didn't give me that chance. There was no chance. My only option was to go away. But it hit me further because there was a one specific turning point that actually made me to choose this path um i was on i was in 11th grade so this is a short story <laughs> so i was in 11th grade uh, probably five six months before i was doing my o levels and um, we had this parents meeting and i remember my class teacher had over they been class teacher was talking to everybody like the parents and the children and then she specifically had me stand up and had my mom come towards her and showed her my um my grades and i did not do good in school let me just be very honest about it i was just focused on astronomy the as i was a, again i was a president for the club so i was doing multiple events running organizing collaborating with high schools and universities in sri lanka because my enthusiasm was skyrocketing at that time all i wanted to do was like uh make my path and i was just involved a lot and i was focused on that area so i was losing myself other side i wasn't doing good on my classes but she had me stand up and she had my mom come towards me and she literally had her to go through all the uh, syllabus, I mean, all the subjects. And then uh, she said that my my dream to become a, a astronomer or astronaut at the time is just pathetic and is just uh, me choosing astronomy is will be my end of my education or ed end of my future. Like there won't be any future because I am chasing a dream that is basically not real that's what her exact words it's hit me towards to, towards my core actually like she had my mom uh my mom felt really bad but in front of all these classrooms the parents and children they all looking at me and i was there just basically numb and but also angry at the same time so that day that was a turning point that's just like a huge turning point because i i was stubborn too let me just be honest on that i was very stubborn in my back of my mind somebody was telling me that just don't worry in two three years 
from uh, you gonna be rewriting the exact thing again like whatever that teachers are saying you is not right you're gonna rewrite this don't worry somebody was telling me that and back of my mind but my mom was crying you know my mom was a very sensitive lady so she cannot take uh, anything that you know wrong and she was very mad at me for not focusing on school either so that day i made this bold choice of definitely i'm gonna leave my country definitely i'm gonna pursue my uh, a degree in astronomy definitely i'm gonna prove that them wrong that i'm going to make my own path i will actually uh clear my path and make my own path you i always said this like one must always walk in a path for path to become a path means that you won't see your path until you reach your destination and you look back and then only you see a path that you came along so that day for some reason i was 16 years old the 16 years old malmi just really saw this somebody was like telling her you need to you need to be stubborn this time you need to prove them wrong and exactly um eight years later the same teacher who who told me that astronomy will be my the uh unreal chasing dream the ex- the same teacher had contacted me had me do a uh school event for entire my my uh school and astronomy and everything and i was like thinking to myself i'm really glad that i was very stubborn that day that i did not want to listen to this lady uh saying that astronomy was my uh my unreal dream so i was really glad but then she somehow remembered that she had she told me this thing on a parents meeting and she actually apologized for the first time in my life i had a teacher actually say sorry to me and i was like i i didn't know what to tell her back but i wanted to tell her this i wanted to tell her that you sh- you are a teacher that you should be di- encouraging another per- an- a student not discouraging but i'm actually glad that you discouraged me because your your discouragement actually made me realize i want to pre- prove you wrong and that was the bold decision i made and i think i did the right job and she in, ra- in fact told me that i did make the right choice by being stubborn because she- i finally did prove her wrong but to my to my own um surprise that we are facebook friends now so that's just really uh the turning point so 11th grade was something i never going to forget in my life so thank you for that question <laughs> yeah so mom from what you've told us so far we can see that you face a lot of tough t- situations in life What do you like to share with us about the challenges you have faced and how you have overcame them? Yes. Um yes, that's another great question. Uh, uh well, in life there are you in life your destiny will always test you and have you experience this uh non-stop uh roll the roller coaster with a lot of bumps and a lot of high and lows and of course just like anybody's journey like and you just like your journey my journey was also many bumps and many rolls and it it's very not really always happy <laughs> so um the first challenge i think i mean i shouldn't say first challenge but the biggest challenge i experienced was personally that i no matter what i do that i try to stay positive in real life that you always doubt like and the uh, uh, doubt is because uh it's it's always come along with your dreams because you don't know whether you can achieve it no matter how positive you make your mindset that i'm going to achieve this i'm going to make it real i'm going to do this there's always a doubt that kind of crosses your dream or goal and just like anybody's facing that i myself still face the same thing 
am I still question myself am I uh, am I on the right track I what I did was right right like I always question that so my biggest challenge that I yet to come over uh, but I mostly like I think it's too late for me to doubt anymore <laughs> is um understand of uh, understanding whether uh, am I in the right track if uh because on my journey it was, the way i created my path was very hard because when you come to a new country especially a country like united united states where the rules and regulations are very strict with immigrants i had to face a, a lot of immigrational um problems i had to go through that to become legalized to uh now only then i can apply to a, a certain internships to get the research experience i need s- stuff like that these problems uh always make me doubt whether i'm on the right track whether still uh, whether i still have hope or not but for me is i always think it's too late to go back uh, i i think like that just to make myself clear enough to keep going you know like you don't want to just doubt and give up uh the dream but you want to doubt and just think yourself well it's so late to give up now it's just mine as well walk along and see what's come next so uh obviously the main uh, in a in a foreign land i experienced a lot of the racism was there obviously but uh in fact it's the uh it's just adjusting to a different culture adjusting to a a country that is very different than where you came from to find your own like the people who can help you because i was alone there was uh many, right now i have students who actually reach out to me personally and ask my advice and which i'm very grateful to do so and i always every time every time i get invitation from sri lanka for us events like this i say yes without hesitating because i would like to give them a chance to get help that they need in the first place but for me i didn't have that uh, opportunity of getting the help i need i had to create my path so not only me somebody else can walk along the same path uh so the challenge wise is is i think is the doubt that i have is well whether i'll end up becoming the one the person i want to become that's just the doubt that always just in me within me but you know you there's a quote saying your enemy your biggest enemy can be your own self right so you just have to fight it alone and just realize that you have done a great job so far and then keep going for your next step and you step by step you're stepping towards the goal that you already implanted in your future so i think that's uh, that would be my answer for the third question so thank you now that you've molded yourself to the woman you are today ma'am what are your greatest strengths well yes uh thank you for that question again i think it's really great questions uh my strength uh remember uh my strength is actually it is in fact coming from my family my father and mother has a biggest uh they're like my backbone but little bit further from them i think my strength also come from from my own self just making myself believe in my own dreams believe on my personal legend that i will someday live in this planet is what my strength coming from that i want to believe that i am here to do something something that i can have somebody else to do and make some bigger thing like for example i would say i know this uh because i would like to I would like to create something that would leave a mark in the planet so somebody else get the benefit of it. That's that's just a feeling I always had in my life. So 
my strength i would all, i think it's definitely my own belief in me and my the gut feeling the intuition that i rely on and keep staying you know uh, positive about your uh, your journey so far the the challenges the mistakes you make the failures that you ran through everything that you went through actually already rewrote your future that you are uh, or plan to go so i think anybody's strength should be their own selves that they are meant to be here that they are meant to do something big that they are meant to leave a mark in a planet in this planet so somebody else who comes after them can go beyond them that's actually what i really think everybody must be doing like uh, for any career that they choose that your purpose in this planet should be to leave a mark so somebody else can go ahead and do something beyond them that and have that cycle keep going for a better country for a better planet so yes i'm pretty sure you have achieved a lot throughout your journey are there any accomplishments in life that you are really proud of um yes thank you <laughs> um well my most recent accomplishment i would say just uh, being able to graduate and um uh, having a degree and in fact just very proud because i am the first generation graduate student means like from both my mother's and father's side i was the only uh only person to be able to go to university to get a degree so i think i i'm little proud about that i'm little proud not be, uh, because my mother who was not able to get a good education in sri lanka um was able to uh have her only daughter to get a college degree that she never able to get so i think my most recent accomplishment would be that that i'm really sincerely proud of that's based on my hard work my sweat and my tears i would say so having a degree in science is not easy uh and having a two degrees in science is not easy at all so i think i would very be happy and proud uh, honestly i'll be humble lee i would be very proud of my recent accomplishment but i think other than that obviously being able to work with nasa and becoming a solar system ambassador is also not only not only a turning point in my life also a, like a biggest one of the biggest achievement i can yet to do so far um because nasa is nasa is beautiful it's amazing i've been there i've been inside i've seen stuff that many people have probably not seen out of the country so being able to be in a same large family to have that connection with the scientists engineers who work inside the nasa and to be able to get lessons the lectures directly from them to have a connection like that is very is a is a honor actually so i think uh being the nasa jpl solar system ambassador and carry out my duty as an ambassador where i teach the my community based on sri lanka and all over the world especially south asia uh and guide them and teach them what nasa do the missions and stuff i think it's my honor because i'm very passionate in teaching so uh those two accomplishments are my uh biggest i think yet so far so thank you for that question <laughs> yeah ma'am i would like to congratulate you for all your achievements and many more to come well now that Balancing work life can be a major challenge for a woman. Ma'am, how have you come to balance your personal life and your work life? Yes, it's a very good question again. Um uh, let me tell you balancing a life 
uh, of work and your personal life is very tough. It's tough because they both are very important to you. It's like you're trying to manage a one kid and another at the same time. <laughs> but uh, I don't think I've done I've done a good job with balancing it. I want I want to be honest about it. But but I've done a some amount of good job of balancing it. I remember just focusing on my school and stressing out to pass the classes and get the degree, but not being able to socially be around with my friends, to be with, to uh, uh, be with my family for when they need. So it's very tough, but you need to understand when about it, uh, about the work and your personal life that there is a barrier, there is a boundary for anything that you do. You have to know one thing for a certain that there are things that you cannot control beyond your boundaries. Something that you cannot control uh, is only in your hand, but something that you cannot control, it's obviously not in your hands. So you need to understand that as a fact and work along with that mindset to have a work and a work and, and life balance. I think uh, just as much a career is important to you, it is very important to be there for your loved ones, for those who encourage you to go out there to, to achieve all the things. So you have to have that mindset of being there for them as well as balancing your work at the same time. So you have to make some disciplines in your life in order to carry out that work balance uh, journey. It's going to be tough, but trust me, with the discipline, with the habit, with the goal set, uh, I think it'll be very easy. It was hard for me when I first stepped onto the career in education and research-based and my own personal life, where I had to work part-time jobs and uh, make money for my not only my uh, um, uh, financial freedom but also to provide for my family it was very tough but you know if the life without the toughness is if, if, if there is no uh, beauty in this life you know you need to have these thrilling stories to share someday so I think um, first step first for a work-life balance is to have that mindset of you cannot control everything that comes to you in, in your life there are certain boundaries and you have to uh, put the disciplines every day for the for the each boundaries that you set so i think uh, that'll be the that'll be my answer thank you thank you ma'am for the wonderful advice for everyone well now we all have looked up to someone for inspiration a role model is there someone whom you've looked up to to gain professional inspiration in life Yes. Um, well, when it's come to the professional inspiration from other women, I think I first got very inspired by Kalpana Chawla. You probably know her. She's the first South Asian astronaut to female astronaut to go to the space. Her story was very, very humbling and very. Uh, touching as well she's she was a woman and she was the only woman her family coming through a, a family of all boys then she had a lot of people discouraging her just like how it happened to me uh people didn't believe that she will make it but she had to make her own journey she had to create her own journey a path to get where she was and she she surpassed her brothers who uh, actually the, her story is very beautiful there are like many books if you like you can read but Kapana Chawla had to uh, leave her country uh, to come and get a good education in the United States and then only she was able to get her citizenship and work for NASA as an astronaut but unfortunately she passed away due to an accident in 2003 with the challenging spacecraft 
but um, she was the first woman that was set in my mind. Trust me, because of her, my first go- uh, dream was to become an astronaut. That's what I wanted to do. But uh, my mother freaked out when I told her that I want to become an astronaut. She knew that if I made my mind set to it, I would definitely go for go for it. But <laughs> she had me uh, change it because she was like, basically, she told me that she might die if I were to cha- choose that career. <laughs> so I end up choosing uh, to become an astrobiologist, which is about... Uh, uh, learning about the like, life in the universe likewise but Kalpana Chawla uh, yes um, uh, let me just be uh, clear on a fact but Kalpana Chawla passed away due to a uh, accident in a Columbia shuttle not the challenger challenger happened uh, uh, before Columbia so I wanted to become a astronaut just like her because she was the first South Asian astronaut and then I I thought maybe if she can do it I might have a chance too so my mind was set to become a, a astronaut in when I was in Sri Lanka but uh, my mother had me change that mindset but well but I think uh, I definitely think Kalpana Chawla actually inspired me and and for and for that reason, I'm actually in a process of obtaining my pilot license at the moment as well because of how uh, inspiring that lady was. So thank you. So ma'am, as a successful individual, a successful woman, is there any special message, any advice that you, that you would like to say to the present generation? to everyone who is listening to this podcast. Yes. Uh, thank you for that final question. Appreciate that. Actually, let me just be very clear on something that you probably not like to hear. <laughs> but uh, in this life, in this journey of achieving something you want, you come across with many people you meet people who will help you who will encourage you and who will actually drag you but you need to know that there is nobody except your family or the closest friend who would actually like to see you in achieving it or becoming successful nobody Trust me on this. I'm telling you because I've been through this. Nobody wants to see you becoming successful. Nobody wants to see you achieving anything. They want to see you actually failing. And they don't want to tell you that. They will tell you, of course, we want to see you uh, being very successful. No. They said that because if they didn't say that, they become a bad person. But they would pray for us to fail. You will encounter such people in your life no matter what career you choose and you cannot change their mentality or you cannot change who they are you just become you just have to be just you just such people do exist and that's because we are humans you know we change a lot but i tell you i let me tell you this just trust yourself. Just trust yourself and trust the journey you've come so far and trust the journey that you will be building. There is nobody for you. Nobody will help you. Nobody will dare to take you up. Nobody will be there to pull you up. There will be only you. You are the only one. If you have a problem in your life, always look into yourself only. The answer is always inside you. So believe in yourself trust in yourself make a path for your own self so i'll see you in other side that would be my takeaway message thank you thank you ma'am your valuable words will be taken into our hearts and minds and a big thank you for joining with us today and sharing your knowledge and your experiences with us regardless your busy schedule 
Thank you to all the listeners who joined in. Hope you found this session interesting. And that brings us to the end of today's session. Hope to meet you all soon with another podcast of this Echo Podcast series of Luminous. Signing off, I'm Nimni Veeravardhana. Take care and have a good day, everyone.